Good evening, and welcome to the National Christian Homeschool Championships Bar or Boys 16 and Under Selection Show for the Nationals in Springfield, Missouri. I've got Jeremy Caldwell with me, and I am Rob Flatt. And we're going to get going right off the bat. We're going to be covering the 62 teams in Boys 16 and Under. We have 15 states that are represented. And Jeremy, it's great to have you, as always, um, when we get these opportunities to uh, take all of the work that's been going on um, behind the scenes and actually put them um, on the screen and share them. So uh, we're really excited. Uh, there's two standalone divisions in boys 16 and under this year. And we're going to kind of go right through those. And um, we'll just kind of get going in the boys 16 and under division one. And then right after looking at the boys 16 and under division one, the 32 teams, we're going to look at the 32 team field and boys 16 and under division three. And then from there, we'll just start breaking down the format, the goal ball divisions. We'll start with the division one and twos. And then we'll go into the divisions th division three. So you'll notice the email address there, seating director at nchclive.com. If there's a mistake such as uh, we've already encountered one today, uh, that a team was left out by accident. And so if that is you and that happens, let us know. Fortunately for us, we will make a quick change. And um, I believe it will have a minimum impact other than we feel awful for the team that watched the selection show and didn't see themselves in it. So uh, again, uh, reach out if there's a mistake of that caliber. And here we go. Boys 16 under Division One, field of 32. I'm going to kick it over to you, Jeremy. 11 states in this division. Yeah, as you can see uh, right off the bat, the five through eight seeds, CHSA, Wolverines, they're the defending undisputed national champion. And, uh, you know, they played against the Bluegrass Blazers, who are in the uh, one through four seeds this year. So, you know, CHSA won it last year, undisputed, 16U. A few of their guys have moved up. They're now playing on the 18U, which made the D1 team uh, field this year. Uh, so they're trying to carry on that legacy. And uh, Bluegrass Blazers are back at it again. They're trying to make it back to the championship game as well. So it's uh, going to be very interesting. I think there's a lot of parity here in 16U. As uh, you can see, there's only two Team USA here in the uh, Division One and Two format. So <clears throat> there's going to be a lot of teams battling, trying to get back to that uh, undisputed game. Yeah, it's a, it's a great looking list of teams, uh, both some fresh faces and some um, stalwarts that have been coming for a long time and have been consistent. You've got the MHEA Eagles there and the one through four seeds. They're the um, 2022 uh, Boys 16 and Under National Champion. Um, you've got CHSA, who you mentioned is the 2023, and uh, Bluegrass Blazers, who were there in the finals. Um, we're going to spend a lot of time talking about the Division I teams um, and Division I and two, and breaking down how that's all going to work. But let's take a quick look at the Division Three field before we get too far into this, because obviously if you're not on one of these two um, fields, then um, please let us know because you should be if you're coming to nationals. These are the 62 teams attending nationals. Also 11 states in the division three format. Um, I, I think when we look at both of these lists, there's a level where um, you see both in, in this particular one, you have a couple B teams here. Um, and I think these are going to be some competitive um, fields for sure. And I really look forward to breaking down Division Three a little bit more. But for the, the time being, let's just keep it moving in Division One and Two, and break down how this is going to to work. Essentially, as you can see, four goal ball classes in Division One and Two, and these are the Division One goal ball classes: Eight A, Seven A, Six A, and Five A. Jeremy, I'm going to kick it to you. Tell us about some of these uh, the top two teams in these these goal ball classes. Yeah, so you see here the we released the one and two seeds. So the number one seeds in all four classes are going to be your four regional champions. So all four regional champions are attending nationals as well, and they will all come in as a number one seed in their bracket. With the Bluegrass Blazers being in the eight A bracket, will carry the overall number one seed, and uh, you know, defending trying to defend their. Uh, runner-up trophy last year and get to that next next level and take home the big trophy 
But to do that, they're going to have to go through Dallas HSAA, who came in runner up out of uh, the Big South to MHEA, who they're going to have to go through the Lincoln Eagles, which was runner up uh, this year at the Heartland Regional. And that was won by the Oklahoma Flame. And they're going to have to go through the runner up of the Midwest, HEA Firebirds, who ended up being uh, taken down by the West Michigan Hornets, who are number one seed in Class 5A. And they will be going against the number two team out of the Southeast in the Bluegrass United. So as you can see here, we have four regional winners along with four regional runner-ups that are the top two, top two seeds in each uh, bracket. So that's going to be interesting to see how the, uh, that matches up. And uh, I, I like the way the field is is coming together here and uh, yeah. you know it's different different regions against each other so it's going to be interesting yeah absolutely it's it's going to be I, I get excited just seeing those two but i know what's coming next i am uh, when we start filling this in a little bit more and that's even more exciting um let, let's just talk about the format really quick i i think for our 32 team format this is a fairly familiar format for those who have been attending for several years if you only came last year, this format's a little bit unique compared to last year. So let me just break it down. And you're going to have four Division One goal balls, and you saw those, Class 8A, 7A, 6A, and 5A. And each of those also has a silver ball. Um, and then there are two Division Two gold and silver balls. And it's worth noting Division One and Division Two will each have a bronze ball winner. Um, it's also very important to note that there will be no reseeding of any sort at Nationals 2024 for any age group across the board, including the boys 16 under Division One and Division Two, and boys 16 under Division Three. So all advancements will be posted in the brackets before the event starts. Monday, there will be 16 teams that come in, or 16 games that are played to determine the 32 teams that are opening up who is going to make Division One. And who's going to be in Division Two? The four, the sixteen teams that lose will move to Division Two, and they will begin an eight-team bracket with a shot for goal ball in Division Two. For the Division One, when the teams that win on Monday move to Division One, they they will advance their goal ball semifinals. So whether it's Class Eight A goal ball semifinals to all the way to four or five A, they're going to be determining that. On Tuesday, we will open up with the goal ball class semifinals. And we'll also have the Division II Gold Ball Class quarterfinals. There will be eight winning teams from, on Tuesday that will remain alive, both in the 16U Division I and the 16U Division II. And that's very exciting because that's a lot of teams that are still going to have something big to play for starting on Wednesday. Um, speaking of Wednesday, the boys 16 under Division I Gold Ball games will be moved for the teams that win it, there are eight teams that win on Tuesday. They're going to be moved to a, a, a live stream feature court, um, and it will include a full broadcast team, including Jeremy Caldwell, Paul Gilmore, Scott Staten, Jesse and Thomas Sanders, and more. The eight teams that lose in the Division I Gold Ball semifinal will move into Division I Bronze Ball bracket, and they will play out first through eight, Wednesday through Friday. The eight teams that win their goal their goal ball quarterfinal in Division Two will move to Wednesday's Division Two goal ball semifinal games. For the eight teams that lose in Division Two quarterfinals, they will move to a copper bracket that will be played out first through eight, Wednesday through Friday. And that was a mouthful. So I'm going to kick it to you, Jeremy, to talk about some of the fun stuff. You've already mentioned the ones and the twos, but now we're getting a look at the three seeds as well and, and what they've accomplished this season. Right, and uh, like you said, we've mentioned the ones and twos already. Now the three seeds, as you can see, once again, we have the uh, one from the Heartland, third place, the Southeast, third place, the Big South, third place, and the fourth place out of the Big South with uh, PT Warriors there. KC Metro coming from the Heartland, Mid-South Mustangs coming from the Southeast, and PISA from the Big South as well. So uh, just in these top 12 teams here there's a lot of a lot of flavor from all four regions so it's going to be yeah. interesting to see you know which region stands strong at the end and uh you know that's always a it's always a battle amongst all these teams when they get to nationals you know they try to 
determine which region was the toughest and who has the most in the final four and the sweet 16. That's all, uh, you, you know, you can hear the, the chatter around nationals and <laughs> in, in all the gyms. So, uh, you know, everybody likes to think that they played in the toughest in the toughest regions when they came out of it. So it's interesting to see. And, you know, one thing we try to do is make sure we get a good mix in each bracket of, uh, of all four regions. So, you know, they, they can all play it out on the floor and, and let the, uh, the last man stand it. Yeah, it's a great balance in this boys 16 and under age group. I think it really shows that the best teams in the nation are willing to travel in this age group. And that's that's what Nationals is for. And it's it, it's not the only thing Nationals is for, but it, it's a lot of fun when the top teams are there. And, and we work hard to make sure that there's something to play for for all teams of all calibers. Uh, but we definitely... Um, put the spotlight on when possible on those um, the elite teams that are are going for the undisputed titles. Um, so uh, that great group of teams, and we're going to actually have some more teams that we talk about here in the very next slide. But this this will, will wrap up kind of the format. Again, it's it's one of our more familiar formats, so I don't have to spend too much time on it. But Wednesday, as I mentioned, we're going to have teams moving to the live stream showcase courts, which this year are Ozark High School and Drury University's O'Reilly Center, just like last year um, for Drury. And Ozark is brand new for the live stream channel. We've never live streamed from there, but it's a, we have used their beautiful court before. Um, class 8A, 7A, 6A, and 5A goal ball winners will advance to the Division I Showdown Series semifinals and stay alive for the Undisputed National Championship which the goal ball showdown series will begin Thursday. The four teams that lose in the division one goal ball games have earned a silver ball and they will move to the silver ball showdown series semifinal. And that will be played out first through fourth with a nice banner for the team that ends up winning that championship. Those games will be played Thursday and Friday. The division two semifinal teams that won on Wednesday will move to the goal ball games on Thursday while the four teams, um, the four losing teams will move to the semifinal bracket of a bronze ball. Um, and that's going to be great. And that will be played out first through fourth, Thursday and Friday. Um, as we move into Thursday and Friday, the Division One Gold Ball Showdown Series will be played out. It's a semifinal, a final, and a third place game. These game um, the Thursday game will not be live streamed on broadcast. However, the winners that advance to Division One's national finals and the undisputed national championship game will move to Drury on Friday which will be the lone NCHBC live stream broadcast court for Thursday and Friday this year at nationals. The division one final four losing teams will play in the goal ball showdown series, third place game teams that lose in the division two goal ball game will then play in the silver ball showdown series. Um, again, no reseeds. And I think that covers that. So now moving into putting more teams in, and as you already have seen the top three, you're getting a chance now to see where those three seeds went along with these four seeds. And if, if you were watching earlier, you know why I was a little bit excited about those top, the, the first slide that showed the first two teams in the classes, but even more difficult, even more exciting. Again, the top teams in the regions are coming and they're coming to prove that they're the best in the nation. And when you have that, you get the recipe for goal ball classes that look this daunting. Jeremy? Yeah, I mean, you, the one that stands out right now is you look at class 5A, and it has, uh, you know, we got four teams listed there, and there's one team from every region in the, in yeah. the four, top four seeds. Uh, I believe that's also the case possibly for 7A. We have three of the regions there. And then uh, 6A also has three of the regions. So it's a uh, a lot of a lot of variety in each one, and uh, you know we try to try to keep it that way because uh, if you look at this, a lot of these first round matchups and possibly second round matchups are going to be against teams that you normally don't see throughout the year. You're not going to see them at regionals or or districts. You know you possibly may have played them in the past at nationals, but that's probably going to be one of the few places that you you see these teams. So. Uh, you know, after this release, you're going to see a lot of teams be going get on some baller TV accounts, trying to get some film study, and uh, trying to see what uh what kind of breakdowns they can get and start having their last few practices. Uh, you know, you know, you're looking at it. We're Monday now, uh, a week from today. We're going to be closing out the first day of nationals, 
<laughs> and uh, so they're able to one, maybe two practices left before everybody gets on the court and tries to start settling who's the undisputed. That's right. And, you know, this is an age group here in boys 16 and under that probably would have as much interest as any of the age groups out there to know that the varsity boys division one will be wall to wall action. We will not miss one of those games on the live stream broadcast from Monday or Tuesday. And we'll be set up at Drury and Ozark High School Monday and Tuesday all day covering the 18 and under division one. Uh, we'll have 24 games on Monday. And then we'll have the eight games that see who goes into Division 1A and stays alive for the Undisputed Crown. And then we'll follow up that night with the, the eight Sweet 16 games that will be played. So it's going to be a great, uh, great time for everyone. A lot of these teams here in 16U have, have um, our teammates or um, have family that are on the 18Us. So it's going to be a lot of fun. If you're a Division 3 team, hang on just a little bit longer. We're, we'll be with you guys and in, in be releasing your goal ball uh, brackets in, in classes here very soon. Um, they, it's a great looking goal ball class. We could spend a lot more time on it and we might just in a, in the ne the next slide, uh, but let's keep it moving and take a quick look at how this will advance in the goal balls. Again, no reseed. So we're announcing ahead of time how teams will be advanced. It's pretty, um, pretty self-explanatory out of the goal ball classes. You're going to have the eight, a winner and the five, a winner. Those goal ball champions will play each other to see who moves on to the national finals. And the same is true with the 7A and the 6A goal ball winners. And out of the goal ball classes, you'll have the 5A silver ball versus the 8A silver ball winner. And you'll have the 6A silver ball winner versus the 7A silver ball winner. I don't know if you've got any uh, anything to add to that, Jeremy. If not, we're going to move on to the next slide. Nope, I think that's about it. That covers it. All right. And if you're excited about the first four in every class, now we have a complete picture here, and this is where it starts to get, well, one, you almost have to just take a second to just take it all in. Uh, you mentioned 5A, Jeremy. That 5A is looking like it's got great flavor. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be uh, a challenging class. I really, I really think that it will be, but I'm not sure it's the most challenging because when I look at these, every single one of those top two, top three teams looks like the real deal. And as you go deeper down, I'm some of these teams, I don't know how they're a four or a five seed. I'm sure they're wondering the same thing. Correct. Right. Yeah, it's gonna be a it's gonna be tough uh all the way through. And you know, you get a good glimpse of this uh slide here and you get to know who your who your matchup's gonna be, your first round matchups and possibly your second round, you know, uh pending any upsets. So, you know, take a glance at this, look it over. Start doing some film study. Uh, yep. It's it's gonna it's gonna take some film study and some some hard practices and a lot of game film, you know, to come out on top. These uh these teams are driving a long ways, just like everybody else in this field. So they're all wanting to come win the same trophy you are. Yep. So it's gonna be a a daunting task for whoever is up to it. And uh, I'm excited to to see how it plays out and see who's going to come visit us on the showcase floor on Wednesday for that go ball Wednesday. Yeah, it's, it's going to be phenomenal. And this is always a hard age group because you always run into a spot where this is an age group that probably has the most amount of fluidity in the sense of um, dual roster players, injuries, uh, maybe a decision to, Hey, we're going to go for it and use some of our players that we didn't use at regionals. And, and this is that age group that has the, if you're a top seed and you show up, unless you're playing a Team USA, you better show up expecting that the team you're playing is way better than you're giving them credit for because that tends to be the case in this age group. Right. And another right. thing is the, uh, you know, in this 16U age group, like you said, because of all the dual rosters, uh, some of these teams are not going to be the exact same team that you saw at regionals. If you do get film study, you know, it, it may be totally different. They may say, hey, man, we got a good shot at 16U, so we're going to focus strictly on this and bring, you know, the best players at 16U. So <clears throat> it's uh, it's going to look different, uh, some teams. So just uh, don't be don't be aware. Don't be shocked. Uh, nobody's going out recruiting extra players just for nationals. It's uh, But it, it's probably going to be – there's going to be a few teams that look a little different. Yeah, and, that, and that's something to always be aware of, especially in this age group. Um, and I, 
I think that we will, you might've noticed a team USA. If you notice a team USA in your, um, your bracket, you might be wondering what is a team USA or how does that work? Well, a team USA is basically, it, we have two different ways that there's a team USA. If you see a team with a USA after that, their name, that is a provisional approval team. That means that they have a player or two that are ineligible by NCHC standards, um, but they are they're playing as a Team USA with the same rules that you will read here. And then, of course, Team USAs are teams that we have that are made up from teams or players around the country that haven't typically played on a team all year together, and they are able to play and participate and have the Nationals experience that they would have otherwise missed out. But it's important to note that a Team USA may not eliminate a team from a gold ball or from a trophy, and whether it's gold, silver, bronze ball, copper, or iron, uh, they can they can't eliminate a team from contention from those or from the top bracket of the division they're placed in. This means that in the opening game of an NCHC event, um, Team USA is going to move left in the brackets regardless of the final score. All right, and so I don't want to take too long on that. Most most people have been coming to our events for years. They fully understand that, but part of the way they do is we break it down every year and try to make it so that it's there's a clear understanding. Brackets will be released Friday. We know everyone's excited to have those. If in the opening game times have already been released uh, today, Monday, March fourth, but the eighteen U and under, um, if you if you have players in the sixteen under age group, this is very important to note. If you have players that are dual rostering, please note that the boys eighteen under games Monday and Tuesday will pay, be played throughout the AM and the PM. So if you're sharing players, it will be very difficult to dual roster. So please plan accordingly. Wednesday through Friday, we hope to have so that fans and dual rosters will have very little competing with them and that they are the, um, the, and we say boys 18, but just in general, the 18 and under teams, we want them to have the best opportunity for their fans to be able to support them. So if you're a part of division one and division two, that wraps that up. We will, we're going to keep on moving along and get right into division three because the division three teams are ready to know more. And so we've already taken a quick look at this. So we're going to just keep on moving, and we're going to get right to seeing some teams in pools. Jeremy, I'll throw it to you. Yeah, once again here, you have a uh, a good variety. Class 4A, you got Aggieland Panthers out of Texas. You got Tulsa Chef Arrows out of Oklahoma. So that's your, that's your Heartland and a big South team there. Uh, 3A, you have Oklahoma Flame and Salt and Light, which is another Heartland and big South matchup. Uh, class 2A, you got the Tennessee Heat out of the Southeast and Aspire Trailblazers out of the Heartland as well. And then the Class 1A, you got the NWA Hornets out of the Arkansas, which I believe they went to the Heartland, and then the Columbus Hawks that are uh, coming in from the Midwest. So uh, once again, the Class 4A is going to be the overall number one seed, Aggie Land Panthers. So they're coming in as number one overall. And uh, trying to trying to get that crown for Division Three undisputed, and they also get to take home a banner, I believe, as well. Correct, Rob? Yeah, we have uh, for the Division Two and Division Three, we have overall champion banners, and for Division One, we have the undisputed banners. Right. Yeah. So that that looks great, and we're going to be talking. We're going to be filling in those um, goal ball brackets here very soon. We've got a couple, a few slides to get through. One of them will be very quick, which is this. It's, uh, as he, as Jeremy mentioned, the number one overall seed in the Division Three is in 4A. So the goal ball winner of 4A will play the goal ball winner of 1A. Goal ball winner of 3A will play the goal ball winner of 2A. Silver ball winner of 1A will play the silver ball winner of 4A. And the silver ball winner of 2A will play the silver ball winner of 3A. And we will not be doing any reseeding, so these advancements will be put into the brackets properly. This is going to be almost identical to the Division One and Division Two field with a small adjustment because we have 30 teams instead of 32. So there will be 14 Division 3A, 3B playing games. 28 of the teams will open up nationals in one of the four 3A goal ball classes, 4A, 3A, 2A, or 1A. The top seeds in Division Three will have the opportunity. The top two seeds in Division Three will have the opportunity for a seeding game, but will automatically be in Division 3A where they'll stay alive for the overall championship in D3. Monday's winners will advance to Tuesday's Division 3A goal ball semifinals. The teams that lose will move to one of 
two Division Three B seven team goal ball brackets that will begin on Tuesday. Tuesday's Division Three A goal ball class semifinals and the Division Three B quarterfinals will begin Tuesday. Eight teams from each division will remain alive for their division's goal ball. The eight Division Three A winning teams will move to Wednesday's goal ball games. The eight teams that lose in Division Three A Three A Gold Ball semifinals will move to the Division 3A Bronze Ball bracket. They will be played out first through eight, Wednesday through Friday. The eight teams that win their Division 3B quarterfinal game will advance to Wednesday's Division 3 Gold Ball semifinal. The eight teams that lose Division 3B quarterfinal games will move to the Copper bracket that will be played out first through, or the Copper that will be played out first through six, Wednesday through Friday. And that is a uh, a quick breakdown on the Monday and Tuesday, but we're going to just finish up on the format and answer all questions format related by going over Wednesday's Division 3A goal ball games, 4A, 3A, 2A, and 1A um, will be played, and the winners will advance to the Division 3A goal ball showdown series semifinals, which begins on Thursday. That's always a lot of fun. The four teams that lose in the Division 3A goal ball games We'll have earned a silver ball and we'll move to the silver ball showdown series semifinal that we played out first through fourth Thursday and Friday. While well, the division three B semifinal winners will advance to the goal ball games on Thursday, while the four losing teams will move to the division three B bronze ball semifinal bracket played first through fourth Thursday and Friday. On the Thursday and Friday, the Division 3A Gold Ball Showdown Series semifinals will begin. Thursday's winners will advance to the Division 3A National Finals. Thursday's 3A um, teams that lose will move to the Gold Ball Showdown Series third place game. The teams that lose in the 3B Gold Ball games will move to the Silver Ball Showdowns matchup against each other. Again, we have four Division 3A Gold Balls, two Silver Balls, or two Division 3B goal balls. There's silver balls that match each of the goal balls, along with a Division 3A and B bronze ball winner. And Jeremy, let's get to the fun stuff. That is a mouthful, Rob. A lot of Division 3, 3A, 3B. Oof. Glad you, yes. uh, glad you got through that. <laughs> so, That's uh, what I'm here for. Yeah. So here, once again, uh, you're looking at the number three and number four seeds now have popped into the brackets. And, uh, you know, Faulkner Falcons from Arkansas, Mid-Missouri Mavericks from Missouri, Fort Smith Patriots from Arkansas, Northside Lions from uh, the Midwest out of Indiana, Red River Rattler from Texas against Salem County Warriors out of Arkansas, Lighthouse Chargers out of Missouri, and the Cincy Trailblazers from Ohio. So if you notice, there's a... Uh, the hometown, Missouri, state of Missouri, is being represented with the Lighthouse Chargers. And I think there's a a few uh, Missouri teams that have popped in here. That's going to, it's always good to see the home state, you know, provide a few teams there. And uh, sometimes they're the largest crowds because they don't have very far to travel to come watch the team play. Especially when they're doing well, they, they definitely start to get bigger and bigger. Yeah. So here's going to be I your full format all 30 teams and all four brackets are shown here uh good variety you got louisiana being represented texas arkansas oklahoma uh indiana illinois missouri wisconsin uh michigan ohio so uh, a lot of different states as uh we we've actually had you know multiple states represented in all age groups so far so we have a very very good variety this year and uh i like to see that and it's uh it's good to see teams coming you know from around the country to compete and uh you know we're growing every year you know we're, we're larger this year than we were last year so uh it's a uh, it's exciting it's good i can't wait yeah. to get there it it, it's a it's a great field, and one of my favorite things is when you start looking at the, a field like this. Is um, we saw some of the results for some of these teams at regionals, 
And, and it's it's maybe been a rough year. Maybe it hasn't been um, going to regionals and dominating type situation. Maybe there's a team or two here that was in the right division at regionals and that that allowed for them to to have success while also being challenged. But for the most part, I'm looking at this, and I, I really do believe that we're going to have numerous teams that have their best results of the entire season um, where the kids start stepping up, where some of the kids maybe even miss some free throws that they need to to miss so that they can go home and work on it and, and they have that that desire. And I think that's one of the biggest things. Back in the day, Jeremy, when you were coaching, uh, it, it – not even as far back as when I was I was coaching, but we had the 64 team format, and what we probably would have done with 62 teams is we would have set it up where it's one versus 64, two 63, or in this case three versus 62, and four versus 61, five versus 60, and that's just how we would have done it. And there would have been one goal ball champion, one champion, that's it. And I'm sure that there's someone watching this broadcast saying that's the way to do it. You're silly for not doing it that way. Right. But what I love that we've been able to see is now you're dealing with four goal ball classes for teams here that this is going to give their players something to propel them, something to motivate. They're not having right. to come in and play the the teams that are winning the regional championships um, that are su- superior um, all season right. long. We This is an opportunity. These teams have kind of played their way into it. And that's one of the advantages of regionals is, yes, some teams will say, well, we want to go to regionals to earn a, a higher seed. But sometimes going to regionals helps you earn a seed into a division that you can compete in. And I think right. that's just as important. So I, I'm going to just mention, I really, really, really like, I think it's a great one, this Class 2A. I think Class 2A has got a lot of flavor. I don't know who the favorite would be. Yes, we have a number one seed um, that in the Tennessee Heat there, but the Spire, Red River, Saline County, Swish of Saints, Shreveport Force, HCYA Warriors. And in this age group, I, I don't think it's impossible to believe that these teams have an, the ability, any of these teams have the ability to put themselves in a position where they're one or two wins away from a goal ball. And right. I, I think that's that's phenomenal. That said, this has been a long presentation, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to wrap it up here. But we want to just say we cannot wait to see you in Springfield, Missouri. We're looking forward to the first games. And if you guys, when your games wrap up, head on over to Drury. Head on over to Ozark. Check out the games on the national live stream broadcast. And let's let's fill up the gym watching some of the best basketball we can all week, all year. Some of the best homeschool teams. And when you're in that big game for you teams that are in the 16 and under division one goal ball games, hopefully we'll be all have a good crowd for you as well, even if it is a morning game. See you next week.